grace, mercy, and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The lesson for our meditation today is our epistle lesson read a moment ago from Philippians 3. And our sermon theme today is entitled, Having It All. Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. What is it worth? Well, that question always finds its way into our lives. If we go to a grocery store or if we're shopping to buy something, if we feel that what we're looking at is overpriced, we're not going to buy it. We're going to just keep looking. When we buy or sell a house or a car, it's the value of the item, or at least what people think it's worth, that drives the negotiations. Every single penny that we spend in life leads us to a decision as to whether or not the good or the service that we're buying has enough value to justify the money that we're spending on. All earthly things have a value. Some things may have very little value to us, so we don't really treasure them all that much, and there are some things that are so valuable to us, they're simply priceless, and we would do or give anything to have it and to protect it. But then if you stop to think about how and what God values and doesn't value things, well now all of a sudden the whole system gets flipped upside down because with God, the things that we value oftentimes aren't very valuable to Him. It's always the case. Our thoughts are not God's thoughts. So God's word of joy to you this afternoon is that in Christ... God replaces the nothingness of self with the everything of Him, which is the very righteousness of Jesus and all the benefits that that brings. God wants you to know that in Christ, you really can have it all. Now, in the text today from Philippians 3, St. Paul talks about what it means to have it all in godly terms and how often that is in contradiction to what the world thinks about having it all. Now, why is there this disconnect? Well, again, it's because of the sinful human nature that all of us have, and it really does see things differently than God does. After all, as we go through this life, we will strive to have it all, and a lot of times that means having it all as the world defines having it all. Having it all from a worldly perspective leads us to focus on ourselves and our possessions and our experiences and our accomplishments and our desires, while somehow one's relationship to God kind of gets pushed to the back burner with all of the distractions that life can bring. Indeed, the world's view of having it all largely is driven by materialism. Now, in Paul's day, the people that were trying to have it all were a group of people called the Judaizers. The Judaizers were people who were followers of Christ, sort of. The problem that they had is they really believed in the old Jewish law that you had to follow those rules to be righteous. And of course, that was getting in the way of the gospel of Jesus, which says you're righteous through repentance and faith. And the Judaizers took a lot of confidence and pride in how well they thought they kept the law. But in verses 4 to 6 today, Paul tries to tell them that if there was really any confidence to be found in our works then he would have outdone all of them because at one time he was a Pharisee. And he lists all of his so-called accomplishments when he was a Pharisee to show that they really weren't worth all that much in spite of the opinion of the Judaizers. Now something that would be good for us to think about is, is there a connection between the obsession with materialism that the world has today and the obsession with righteousness and doing good things that was big back in Paul's time. On the surface, they seem kind of different. Paul's world was a lot more consciously religious. Even if their religions were false, people felt like they were accountable to the law. 
whether it be God's law and his word or whether it be man-made religious laws. So to them back then, having it all focused not so much on getting material possessions as it meant focusing on your relationship with God and what you were doing to further that relationship. Today, though, the world is a lot more secular. More and more people are losing that sense of being accountable to God for their actions. Materialism and life experiences have become types of gods to many, and that's what people anchor their lives on. So today, having it all is a lot less religious in nature. But see, the thing is that those two things are the same in that at the end of the day, both of them are focused on ourselves rather than being focused on God and His Word. Paul's world worried about what we could do to earn God's favor. The world today focuses on self-gratification, but either way, the world sees having it all in terms of me instead of in terms of God. And the other thing that Paul's world and our world today have in common is that having it all that way will never be good enough. If you strive to have it all through worldly possessions, you're never going to be satisfied. When our sinful nature focuses on earthly stuff, we'll never have enough. If we have two, we're going to want three. We always want to keep up with the Joneses. If we end up making more money, somehow we spend more money. And even when we were little children, we just could not wait for Christmas so we could get that present that we absolutely had to have. And when we get it, we play with it for about a month or so, and then we move on to the next big toy or game. And with human righteousness, it's the same thing. Because no matter how hard we try, no matter how proud we might be of the things that we do, no matter what our history of works might be, the fact is that we will never, ever be able to do enough to please God because we aren't perfect. The Judaizers and the Pharisees tried a little trick. They rewrote the standards of goodness and they lowered it so that they could actually meet the standard, but their standard didn't line up with what God had said. And Paul tried to tell them this in verse 8 when he said that he counts all of his works and possessions as lost, consider them nothing but rubbish. So, whether you define having it all through materialism or self-righteousness, the reality is having it all will never be enough. But the great thing about our great and loving God is that God gives us the loss of all worldly things so that in our nothingness we can then know the all-sufficiency of Jesus. Paul reminds us that Jesus Christ made us his own and caused us to suffer the loss of all things. In Acts chapter 9 on the Damascus Road, Jesus graciously caused Paul to know him and the power of his resurrection and to share in his sufferings, becoming like him in death, because through that death of Jesus, Paul also will share in eternal life in Jesus. And it works the same way for you today. When you were baptized, you became one with the death and resurrection of Jesus. So we thus are united with the life-giving power of Jesus and joined together with him forever. You see, your life is patterned after Jesus in that Jesus was born, Jesus suffered, Jesus died, and then Jesus was raised from the dead to glory. So in the same way, you were born, you're going to share in suffering in this world that rejected Jesus, but you are in Christ, so you will rise from the dead also. Death could not hold Jesus. You're baptized into him, so death can't hold you either. Jesus has given you his Holy Spirit, who leads you to be emptied of all worldly desires and all worldly aspirations, and leads you to the grace and mercy of Jesus. So by grace, God takes our nothingness and fills it with everything, because he fills us with Jesus. Now, as Paul says in verse 14, we press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, yes, when God intervenes, everything changes. 
God gave us a new heart, a new spirit, a new perspective on life. The old perspective was one that was driven by the flesh and it focused on me. But the new perspective is governed by the Holy Spirit and it focuses on what actually matters, which is the cross of Jesus. So now when you think of it that way, all of a sudden the value of everything gets changed. The things of this world that the flesh would cling to with all of its might really are truly worthless without the life that comes through Jesus. All of the worldly blessings are meaningless apart from Christ. All of the efforts to do good works are totally useless without the forgiveness of sins that comes through Jesus. So, worldly gain comes and worldly gain will go, but Jesus is truly irreplaceable and priceless. In Jesus, you've been given the forgiveness of all your sins. In Jesus, you've been made into a child of God. In Jesus, you've been connected to the source of everything you need in this life. Because everything you have, you have because Jesus has given it to you. And in Jesus, you have been given the absolute assurance of life eternal in heaven. And the world could never give you that. All of this is yours because you are in Christ. So who says you can't have it all? Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We rise for the singing of the Magnificat. <laughs>